and the first place they went was St. Patrick's School to train with an Irish missionary turned legendary coach, Brother Colm. I learned maybe from the best teacher of all, the athlete. Now, in the 1970s and 80s, the European athletes wouldn't dream of coming to Kenya to train. <laughs> then when they went out winning major marathons, Olympic gold medals, world records, people began to say, hey, let's stop here. Yeah. <laughs> There's something here. Yeah. We've overlooked. Yeah. There are still people who live in this myth that, you know, Kenyans have been waking up and running long distances from the time that they're little. You have people that want to give it strictly to genetics. I think people tend to ignore the fact that they do train very hard and they're very focused in their training. It shows a commitment and a willingness to make sacrifices to achieve something. Brother Combs 40 year stay in Iten introduced the world to a culture of athletic talent in Kenya. And after crossing paths with 25 world champions, four gold medalists, and modern day record holders like David Rudisha, Brother Colm himself has become a student of the Kenyan attitude. Kenyans have a great capacity to be present to what's going on here and now. And when it comes to a major race, you need that capacity. And I think Jake and Zane may have learned some of that. Jake and Zane, when they first came here, started right here. Started right here. I thought it was only a matter of time before they just decide, this is not for us. They were very determined to go into the lines then, break down any psychological barriers they might have against why the Africans are so good and uh, mix it with them. They were, I'd say, the best part of five years before they really started to make any impact, which is a long... That's a long time. That's a long time for kids to stay at something not knowing really, are we going to make it? Are we not going to make it? I'm not okay, man. I've never not finished a session with these guys. 